A U.S. Marine Corps vet continues to serve his country at the very heart of our democracy. Sean Haynes patrols the U.S. Capitol grounds with a special partner. Anna Warnicke reports from our nation's capital. He is my partner. His name is Lord. Former U.S. Marine Sean Haynes joined the Capitol Police Force 33 years ago. Lord is his fifth four-legged partner. My third dog, his name was uh, Hawk. He was a Dutch Shepherd. He was single purpose, explosive detection. Uh, my fourth dog was a black Labrador retriever named Will, uh, single purpose. And um, now I have Lord. Haynes teamed up with Lord in 2018. They are one of 56 canine crews that patrol and protect the grounds of the U.S. Capitol and the lawmakers inside. The canine unit is a select team within the U.S. Capitol Police Department. Each dog is paired with a technician, and together they go through an extensive training program before they report here to the Capitol. It's the best job on the department. Haynes is one of the longest serving technicians in the canine unit, a role he says the Marines prepared him for. I'm very disciplined. Um, I'm never late for work. <laughs> I'm always an hour early, you know, every day since I've been here. In 2019, Haynes and his partner were honored by the department for finding and catching a suspect accused of killing a 15 year old boy. But his most unforgettable moment as an officer happened 21 years ago. On September 11th, Haynes and his partner Fanto were on duty when three hijacked planes crashed into the Twin Towers and Pentagon. A couple of canine teams were sent up to the Pentagon to um, provide explosive detection capabilities during the recovery effort at, uh, at the Pentagon. So I get a little you know, teared up about this sometimes. Yeah, because I saw a lot. So. Yeah. Haynes says he's not sure when he will retire, but he knows that when he does, Lord will retire too. For Veterans Voices, I'm Anna Warnicke. In November of 2021, ABC 27 received word that a soldier from Mechanicsburg, Scott Laird, passed away from colon cancer. According to his doctors and his family, it was due to his exposure to burn pits while serving in Iraq. That was denied by the VA, but now it can't be. Kayla Schmidt reports. There was a great uh, sense of relief uh, and gratitude that uh, this was finally done. I think that was widely shared. President Joe Biden signed the PACT Act into law Wednesday, August 10th. Bills and policy are not self-executing. You have to work hard and there has to be oversight. The Honoring Our Pact Act of 2022 will expand health care to millions of veterans exposed to toxic burn pits. And it passed with a crucial tie here in the mid-state. A year ago, most of America didn't even know about burn pits. And I feel like now everybody knows. That tie being Scott Laird. Laird's widow, Michelle, did not let Scott's legacy die with him. She continued to fight becoming a face to a name for elected officials like Democratic Senator Bob Casey. It would be a, a, a stain on America if we had failed. I feel validation. I feel a little bit of closure. Um, I feel some resolution. Michelle Laird opened up her world to ABC 27, providing documents proving Scott was a victim of what many elected officials and the VA were overlooking. They came home. We put them on trial. One high profile supporter made this his personal mission. Veterans activist John Stewart threw himself into the battle. And I know the lives you live there. You know, I've been on USO tours. I got to tell you something like, wow, I didn't know you could treat people that badly and still have them fight for you. Now with the passage of the PACT Act, service members will no longer have to prove their cancer or illness was caused by breathing in jet fuel, human remains or other deadly toxins. And we've got to make sure the VA does its job this year, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. And some weight is lifted off Michelle's shoulders, knowing the U.S. government now has her back. This was for Scott, and I hope that the other families out there suffering feel like it was for their person. For Veterans Voices, I'm Kayla Schmidt. And this act will also help veterans and their families that were stationed at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina between 1950 and 1980 because they were exposed to toxic water on base. Stay with us for more Veterans Voices stories.